morning on this edition of our Clubcast. Um, there is so much to talk about. Melanie and I was have been talking about what are just some great topics that we need to discuss, um, things that are happening in our community, things that are happening globally. But we want to spend a lot of today talking about our community and what our community has done throughout this pandemic, this COVID-19, um, and what Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie in partnership with many, many people have done to make it easy for some families and to really ease some of the tension um, with not just our staff, but community partners, community leaders, families, people um, who really do need us most in these times and need. So I'm just gonna jump in right with Melanie right now and just kind of talk about um, just some of those, these things that we're doing. So Melanie, Melanie, <laughs> Melanie. And Melanie's acting like she doesn't know where to begin, but Melanie has a lot to say, so I'm just gonna let her go with it. So the last time that we spoke with the community, we talked about what our three initiatives are, which is serving our essential employees' children at our neighborhood clubhouses, which has been an awesome collaboration with the county. We're also rolling out our virtual club, which has been an undertaking with our staff to include having partners such as FAU Harbor Branch, um, Lindsay School of the Arts. That's an online platform that anyone can access on our social media or on our YouTube channel. But in addition to that, we've been able to reach out to our club members who we love and miss, and our staff has been able to connect with them via Zoom. So our parents have access to seeing other club members, seeing our staff, and they're really enjoying those enrichment and fun activities. So we're keeping it fun for those parents. Just remember that's a little stress reliever for you during the course of the day. And then our second, our last piece was really basic needs for the community. So we did an awesome rollout of food right off the get-go. So we'll get more into that. And we appreciate all of our partners that have made that happen to serve up to 1,500 meals a day um, and be able to connect with our families too so that they could tell us other needs that they had. So those were our three initiatives. Um, this week is our 25th anniversary mm -hmm. celebration that was marked, so happy birthday to us. Yes, yes. And we're going to go into a little bit of, you know, celebrating the past, present, and what the future is going to look like, and how we can continue to support these kids and support these families. Well, we've talked over and over again about uh, how this all started. It started with one clubhouse. We had some leaders in the community that were like, we need safe places where kids can learn and grow. And so we went from one clubhouse to a few kids to now having 20 clubhouses with 4,600 club members and counting. Even during this pandemic, um, we've been able to reach out to lots of our club members uh, virtually. Uh, some of our teams get to come up and see us and they are social distancing for the most part. You gotta remind them a lot, but they're doing it. Um, but I wanna uh, just really, because, you know, we're doing what we said we were going to do. And so the thing that we said was gonna happen is we were gonna do whatever it takes to blank, 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 whatever that blank, blank, blank was. And for us, whatever it took was making sure we fed the community. Mm -hmm. And so we work with the Treasure Coast Food Bank, uh, Judy Cruz, and that's been a fun and exciting adventure, knowing that, not fun in a way that, you know, there are a lot of people that are food insecure, but that we were able to turn our hat backwards, turn our hat backwards, and say, hey, let's get into the space where we need to. So we've uh, been able to serve like you said, almost 1,500 kids a day. And I think we're right around 40,000 meals that we've served so far. I think the cool thing that, the, one of my great experiences was being able to go into the neighborhood uh, with, you know, two, 300 servings of food. And I've had, you know, Commissioner Townsend, Commissioner Mitchell with me, and we would go in and serve the neighborhoods. And we would see some of our club members and they could tell us where all the kids were. Mm -hmm. They could knock on those doors and say, hey, there's four kids in this area, there's two kids here. And so they were still a big help. They were still doing their, um, their part, 
even not being in the physical boys and girls club. So that was awesome. Uh, just so many other things that your team has come up with, so many new concepts that we never thought that we would be doing right now. This whole virtual platform has really changed the landscape, I believe, with how we're going to do business going forward. While we will still have club members, now we have just another way that we can reach out to kids. So I really want to talk a little bit more about that because we've had Zoom calls with kids and you could just see in their face they were excited our staff members were excited the parents were excited the parents actually had the opportunity to see what their kids are actually doing mm -hmm. in the club just virtually and so uh talk a little bit about uh some of the people dr lagakis um, leading that charge on the operation side and uh, some of the other staff members that are working through that absolutely so we have an awesome team that's really been able to pivot and roll out with the new ways to reach our families. So what we have is a weekly schedule that's set up. So if you go to our website, you could actually see what's planned. And the neat piece is we have different activities throughout the whole day. So um, our VP of Operations, Dr. Anastasia Lagakis, put together this wonderful program menu for parents and also a way that was engaging the community. So. Every, I'm, I'm glad you did it. It's bothering me. So we had, we had um, every day our club code is read by a special guest. So whether it's Sean Boyle from Children's Services Council, um, whether we have Gail Harrell on there, whether we have um, somebody, one of our partner agencies reading it, that's a really awesome way that we've been able to engage people every morning. That kicks it off for our kids. We have special readers. Um, my kids especially enjoyed a crafts with Kayla. So Kayla Mitchell, a long, a long time club director, is a, she actually took a branch off of a tree and showed how you can use that as a paintbrush. And I never can find paintbrushes around my house. Wow, so that was, that's cool. That was really helpful as a parent. So I love how our staff has been thinking innovatively on what are our parents experiencing right now? What does their day look like teaching our kids, working? And then really coming up with simple things that they may have on hand at home to be able to engage their kids, exercise. The kids maybe are on their couch a lot. They're on um, virtual devices. How can we get them up and moving? So Caitlin Sparrow, one of our other club directors, she's doing all of these fitness challenges, it's which awesome. I really love. Well, you know, it's uh, one of my favorite was uh, FAU Harbor Branch. Yeah. Like they did one about um, what was it about uh, marine biology? Marine biology, but but it was very specific about um, conservation. Conservation, and it was like wow, like the way they presented it, it was was amazing. And it, and it, uh, I, I remember calling Rachel and saying, "You got to have the kids watch this because it was informative." and it was clear and uh, they just did a great job with it and really the biggest piece you and i talk about is like how did how does this all come to fruition we have the staff we have the boots on the ground we have the thought leadership to make this happen but there's so many people in the community that stepped up right off the get-go yes, yes, yes. to help the funding and to help the wheels turning so i know you want to talk about the consortium with the martin st lucie community foundation yeah. and just how that the ball got rolling on People stepping up to say, Boys and Girls Club, how can we make help you make this happen for the kids? Well, I just want to look at the camera on this one because I, I think it was important that um, that Community Foundation of Martin St. Lucie County stepped up. You, what they did was they got a group of leaders uh, in different uh, sectors and they came together, looked at what the needs were in the community. We had to do a really short application talking about needs that were current but even looking forward to what do we think we're going to need. And we were able to uh, receive some of those dollars that allow us to do the work that uh, we do the best. And so I do want to give a quick shout out to Children's Services Council, um, who, who has been a long-term partner with uh, Boys and Girls Clubs. They did a really good job at uh, providing us some additional funding uh, so that we could do some of the things that we would like to do with our parents and families and to include um, like purchasing games, something that's very important. It's like during this time when the families are used to having uh, the, uh, the schools uh, with their kids the majority of the day, now the parents are having to become the teachers uh, and they have to be the parent. And, and, and when I say teachers, because obviously home is where the first teaching starts, but we're talking about 
actual academics. So it's two different uh, schools of thought there, but we're talking academics, math, uh, science, and, and social studies, and that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, we talk with, with our Children's Services Council about how can we engage parents and, and kids together, and so we came together with that, and it worked out really nice. Um, we also, uh, the community foundation themselves, they, they provided some funding with some of their uh, uh, agencies that are under them, and, and then we had Impact 100. I was very happy that Impact 100 looked at it a little differently. They, they switched gears, and we were able to get some dollars that would allow us to do uh, a, a, a many things, and, and also Cleveland Clinic and Bank of America as part of that consortium. So I know there was a few more folks that were in that, uh, but we want to thank them personally because those dollars came in handy, and it allowed us, number one, to keep our staff on. Um, and number two, it allowed us to prepare ourselves for this virtual reality, as well as some other things that we had to get done. But since I'm like throwing shout outs, I think it's important um, that I throw out some other shout outs. Boys and Girls Clubs of America has uh, partnered with some of the largest organizations on the globe and across America. And so we were able to get a grant from Coca-Cola, uh, a grant from the Deerbrook uh, Family Foundation. Um, and I wanna thank Jim Clark personally, uh, just for his leadership to make sure that we're able to do the jobs that we say we're gonna do. Um, when you look at uh, some of the other people that have just been involved, uh, we've had farmers in, in uh, Pahokee and Belle Glade. Uh, we've had uh, this county, the county has, has taken on the responsibility. And you don't see this a lot. And I've worked in a lot of settings where the county has said, we want to take care of our non-essential work, uh, I'm sorry, our essential workers, as well as going back to the non and essential workers, you know, everybody's an essential worker, depending on what your field of, of expertise is. Then what the county was looking at was some of those basic things that we need, firemen, police, picking up trash, you know, uh, medical personnel to help with the COVID-19. So what they did was, uh, they took up the, the, the bill and then they would figure it out with, with all those businesses and those essential uh, places. Uh, so they did that for us and, and so we're serving you know upwards of 136 kids across our five locations. So mm -hmm. I'm thankful for that. Then we got a, a, a huge grant from the Mortgage Family Foundation that allows us to pay for some of that uh, for those essential workers but also to get out and do backpack type activities mm -hmm. and some other things for our families. Uh, there's just, there, there are some people prior to this that got us to this place. Yeah. When you look at, uh, and you may have Club to- Club 25. Club 25, I mean. So part of our 25th anniversary was coming up with these groups of people that were our top supporters. Club yes. 25 were businesses and individuals that were making $25,000 gifts or more to the club to make sure that we were reaching our priority areas. So transportation being one of them to be able to get those vans, we had GL Homes, we had Southeast Elevator, mm -hmm. we had A&G Concrete Pools, mm -hmm. um, and a whole group of other people, the Hunts. Um, they all set the framework so that we, the bones, they made our bones strong so we could really deliver at this time, like immediately, boots on the ground, be able to roll these pieces out like the food. Right. And then you have these, um, you have these amazing in-kind partners. So we already do so much with the St. Lucie Public Schools, but what I love is this week they're parking their buses at our center so that they're providing Wi-Fi for the communities where it's needed most, which is an awesome initiative. Well, even when you think about that, it wasn't, it's not just a day parking their vehicles we're actually opening up our Wi-Fi as well mm -hmm. so with you know when we got a call from the school district it was like how can we work together to get this get this internet up to the families and so having Wi-Fi in the community is a big deal so you could see um, that the community is collaborating and they're talking with each other there, there are so many other people that we failed to mention um, I was thinking uh, Philip Bush and, and the Peter W. Bush Foundation. I mean, uh, they have done so many things for us over the years. And when you think about the, the groundwork that they set up years ago, it helped bring on new people. Mm 
-hmm. And you think about the, you know, each of these great organizations challenging each other to do better. Yeah. And then, and then you, you think about the grassroots dollars that we've received. I mean, I went to Mark's Motors the other day, and it was like six of them got together and they, they raised $1,100. And it was to feed families and to do other things that they trust that we're going to put those monies in those spaces we said. Mm -hmm. But I also want to talk about people like this, you know. So I was thankful I'm an Army guy. But we have people making masks for us. And I just got a call the other day from somebody saying, we got tons of masks for kids. How many do you need? So um, it's just been a great run looking at uh, how the community has come together. i tell you something else that we have done uh, for our staff, because our staff is part of the community. So we get to every night feed, because of the help of donors, feed some of our staff every single night. But not just them, but the entire family. So every day we're serving about 180 people, our staff and their families, a meal utilizing the small businesses in our community. Mm -hmm. And these small businesses, when you look at Kyle G's, and, and don't let me forget some of these people, you know, you got Kyle, you have Tuta Fresco, you have uh, the Draft House, you have uh, Jimmy Wabana Bar, and um, Scott Van Dusen and, Texas Roadhouse. and Texas Roadhouse. Texas Roadhouse. I mean, there's so many places out there. We had to make sure that we were giving back to them because they give back to us every year, whether if it's food, whether it's in kind, or just being present at some of our events. And so we're thankful to all of our small businesses and what we're doing. Let's let's uh, let's uh, take a break from from that and talk about. Some of the things that's going to happen because you know we have this part of it. We're right in the thick of this. We're going to continue to do it, but what's going to happen from here? Like, what are we going to do? Like, we got to think about summer. I mean, parents have been with their kids now about two months, and I'm sure they can't wait to continue this. But what are we going to be able to do this summer with the kids to to get them ready for the next school year? Mm -hmm. Um. So. We were joking a little bit this morning, but what does Mother's Day is coming up, and what what could a mother possibly want for Mother's Day this year? So maybe they want a little privacy. Maybe they have a bunch of kids running around in the house. Maybe I think they, my wife does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe if we were able to give the gift to a mother of being able to have a safe place for their child to go, and that they're assisting them with maybe some of that learning loss that could have happened over the last couple weeks or during the summer, and that they're giving their kids that activity, that time to reconnect with some friends. So I think as an organization, we're following the lead of the community and safety-wise, really knowing that in a couple weeks we could be able to have the opportunity to open up facilities for children to come back to a Boys and Girls Club mm. and keep the social distancing and all the regulations in place, but really be able to offer that for parents. And the kids having that fun opportunity again, that time to reconnect for our own club members, the time to reach out to new club members, and just have that as a economic stimulus for parents to be able to go back to work feeling safe that their kids have a place to go. Well, I mean, when you say that, I was thinking too, um, we have to do our business different mm -hmm. because, you know, when we go in the clubhouse, you know, there's a lot of kids, just a lot of kids just everywhere in the clubhouse. And I think it's going to be some time. And I think as an organization, you know, we're putting in plans for a year out. Not that this is going to be a year, but we want to make sure we are at least prepared for a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, in order for us to prepare, we have to work with other organizations and other, we got to work with the county, we got to work with the cities. And so we are in talks with a variety of people right now to see and make sure that we have enough space so that we could serve the kids that we normally serve. We're going to continue to do that. I'm thankful again for Sean Boyle at CSC that we could actually have discussions on uh, the makeup of our business today and the model for the future. So I think we just gotta continue to work on that. I know there's gonna be um, a lot of things coming down the pike in terms of how we do special events, how we, how we look at a variety of things in our organization. So I don't think we're not gonna have special events. 
I just think they're going to be very creative in the mm -hmm. way we have special events. And I'm not going to even share what I think you guys are going to do because I probably say it wrong. But I'm sure that you guys are going to uh, have some really cool things coming up. Well, we do want to make it clear. We are having a chili cook-off. That's all I want to hear. We just, it may look a little different. Okay. It may taste a little different, right? Okay. But we will have the chili cook-off. So we are going to have a chili cook-off. Yes, we are. Okay. Um, and we'll be able to give some details to our community. What I'm excited about with this chili cook-off is that we'll be able to engage even more people than we've ever had before. Oh, wow. Even with the social distancing? Yeah. And we'll be able to um, have more challenges going on. Oh, so wow. we know that we have competitive teams. Maybe this will give us the opportunity to have thousands of teams wow. virtually. I like that. I like that. Um, I, I was thinking, too... Um, my board of directors have just stepped up and have just done a good job. Like, just a really, really great job. And I don't think they always uh, take the compliment like I want to throw it out to them. But we've had uh, two board meetings since uh, this pandemic has happened. And the, the quality of the, the board meetings have been quite, quite amazing. Um, and the support uh, of our cha my chair, Leslie Kristoff of, of Kaiser University, uh, it's just been remarkable. And we're excited that we were one of the recipients to get the, uh, the, uh, this, the uh, CARES Act money. Mm -hmm. And that's going to allow us to do some things over the next few weeks. We don't know all the details, and we're working through that because it's really about our community. And we want to make sure that every dollar that we spend is going back into the community mm -hmm. for our kids. And so um, just know that your Boys and Girls Clubs is working very diligently to come up with a plan that's going to benefit you, your children, and your family. And we will continue to work through uh, this uh, coronavirus. We will do everything in our power to serve you. And uh, if there's things that we could do to help you, please don't hesitate to go to our website and see what we have available, but also you can always call us and see what we can do. And, and maybe it's not Boys and Girls Clubs that you need, maybe it's another agency, but maybe we can point you in the right direction. So thank you so much for trusting us with your babies, and mm -hmm. we'll talk to you soon.